Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 13 of Project Ultron, which is to build Ultron as a real robot. Because Ultron's not a costume, there's no one inside. So I've got quite a long way with this. We've done quite a lot of actuators and joints that are going to be able to move this whole thing around. It's quite biologically inspired. I did quite a lot of early R&D in the series. Go back and look at those videos. But in this video, we're going to continue building and try and get the arms on. And this is quite an interesting mechanism, and I did some early research in some of the early videos. In part three, I made this little test arm and I drove this from an inertial measurement unit, which is going to be, make up um, a motion capture suit. So basically it can track my motions, but also work out what to do with the limbs that aren't tracked and also use its own AI to decide if it wants to or not. But anyway, what we've implemented so far on the big Ultron essentially is this axis that turns. So that's been done. We've also implemented the arm up and down axis. If I just grab that pretty much. And that leaves us with the other shoulder axis, which is actually here, which turns. And that's because as this turns, it needs to be able to keep this thing in line so that it can actually move its arm backwards and forwards. So uh, today we're going to be starting to work down the arms and doing this kind of fake bicep joint. So go back and have a look at part three to see this in motion and find out how it works. Well, that is what we need to do now. I've got the ability for this to move backwards and forwards and the gearing for that is just in the chest here and all my joints have series elastic actuators in which can sense being back driven or sense collisions that's why this is divided into two and there's going to be something squashy in between the two when they turn so that it can sense with full sensitive resistors what that force is so um, this has been detailed quite a lot in the previous parts as well worth a look we've similarly got the same thing in the shoulder hubs so these pieces move independently of the middle. And again, we've got that turning section with a squashy thing and full sensitive resistors. So now I need to build on here and build another rotating axis above the elbow. Now, uh, both of those are gonna work in tandem. So this and this one, as this whole arm moves forward with this, the other one has to rotate. So they need to be very similar mechanisms. In fact, I think they should be identical gearing mechanisms. So I've actually already printed off another set of these and I'm going to make another mounting to attach them just under the arm. And I think that basically I need an axle that comes all the way down here in a straight line from this bracket. And I need to mount that assembly there just in the upper bicep. Here's one of them. And as I said, that's in two parts. So we've got space for those squashy things to go in. And then those will rotate against each other. And we get full sensitive resistors in these slots and we can measure the force. So on top of that goes a gear that I've got just here. And then there's an off-center gear, and then finally, like so, and then that was driven by, whoops, the motor. So all this needs to be fitted together, but I need to make a bracket to attach it to this arm. So I've got some 8mm studding here, and I think a large piece of that's going to get fixed on these brackets I left. And then this will go underneath here. Let's just shove that through. I've already fitted a bearing in the bottom. So it's somewhere there, approximately in line, sticking out slightly. And that allows then my bicep essentially to rotate in this axis. So it's not very human-like, but there is a good reason for it. And um, you must check out part three to see what that reason is. So basically, let's design a bracket that fits on here that holds this studding really well. And of course, that's going to bear the whole force of the arm leaning out. And of course, I'll make a symmetrical one that fits over this side too. Here's my main shoulder hub that we already have on the robot there and the piece I'm going to add looks like this which is going to be made of two pieces so I can print it and it's flat on the bed. Obviously it's got this cut out that comes underneath the hub so it's free to move and it holds a piece of 8mm studding which runs through both pieces through that hole and there's a captive nut on the top so that runs all the way through and out the bottom. I've got the other mounting hole there as I did with the previous assembly to hold the intermediate gear and the motor should hopefully fit inside this box to mesh on that gear. So the studding will run all the way through and the series elastic actuator with the big gear on will mount below that and then we can continue to mount the rest of the upper arm on the piece of 8mm studding. Here they are, I've made the two opposite parts and I've already done the solvent weld there. So that fits inside the existing shoulder hub. 
And I've put this piece of studding in that's got a captive nut, and I've just put a nut on the bottom there to hold it while the solvent weld sets up. Um, this one I've already slotted the uh, series elastic actuator part on. So that goes on there, and of course the intermediate gear goes in here, like so. The mesh is on there, and that fits onto a shaft on here, which is 6mm. And then, as before, the motor drops in the top. So we should be able to get those assembled, and then we can start planning the rest of the bottom of the arm there. Here's one assembled, it's pretty tight in there. You can see the gears in there, they do mesh okay though. And that rod comes up just by that motor, so if I um, put some power on this, you can see that works pretty well. Obviously it'll be this way up. Yeah, I've got quite a bit of torque there, so that's okay. Obviously, um, it only really needs to do a 180, so I think that's going to be fine. So the arms were on, obviously I've still got these bits of studding here which I'll probably cut down but I don't know how to how much yet so obviously I've got the elbow joint to go on. Bear in mind this studding stays still and everything rotates around it, obviously I can continue this down if I need to just to give it a bit, a bit of extra strength. I can have another bearing with another thing fixed at the bottom of this series elastic actuator uh, which turns around it as well, although I might want to put a feedback pot in line with it in which case I'll be cutting it right off and putting a lock nut on the bottom. But there we go, um, it looks very wide at the moment in the shoulders of course, and that's because I don't have the hips on, so I've still got hips that come out to about here, and of course we've got those scoops that come down either side, so the whole torso is going to look a lot wider, there's still some conduits that run up the side as well um, inside those loops, so once the loop is in we're probably not going to end up with that much spacing and the cosmetics for the arms, so although the shoulders look really wide, that's basically the right scale as per the CAD and per the reference pictures. So my servos have arrived now for the head mechanism I started building last time, so we're going to take a look at that. Last time I built a neck that rotates it on a gear, and there's a motor driving that and a whole assembly holding it, and that's the bracket that holds the chest on. I put these two servos, a placeholder at least, to the front so that I can move that up and down. So the top is going to be a gimbal which I've now designed which is these three sections. So if we get rid of the outside one, you can see this one has a hinge, a pivot point through uh, side to side so that it can hinge backwards and forwards. And the other one, if we get rid of that fake head for now, has a pivot point through the end so obviously that can move in two axis and that's going to be pushed around with some sort of levers that go to these screw holes from the two servos and the middle piece will be solvent welded onto the existing piece so a pretty simple mechanism the head is obviously going to be mounted on that and I've left plenty of screw holes to al allow me to do so so we'll get those parts printed and then hopefully we can assemble it and at least manually turn these servos around to see how it moves here are the parts and I've already assembled one of these, so I've got this assembly and you'll notice I've rounded the corners here so that this fits rather nicely on the other axis. So I just need to cut some more studding up to put through there and then we can mount that on the head and have a look at the levers that push the front. Here it is finally assembled, so as you'd expect it's got all of the axis, so this way and this way. So basically a nice gimbal there so I can push the fronts up in any combination to tilt the head or pan the head and of course the whole thing rotates as well. So let's get that stuck on and sort out the servos. Here we are, so I haven't solvent welded this to the red part yet so it's free to rotate but obviously the red part rotates but I can't back drive the motor so for now I'm just going to leave this slack so I can move it to test. Obviously it's got quite a range of motion there, probably more than it needs. Well I don't know, maybe it's the same as my head. Probably can't look up quite as much, but that'll do. And obviously the head gets mounted on here, so Ultron does have quite a long neck, but there are these other parts to come in and the neck conduits. So I just need two levers, and I thought maybe they'd need to be curved or bendy to come round, but I think they can just be straight from the middle, and that amount of travel should be enough, hopefully. Otherwise I need to put some longer levers on and have them come outside, but then there's a danger they'll hit these. So I think actually that much travel on the longest axis should be okay, but let's stick a lever in and try it, and obviously we can always come back and change it. I've made some temporary levers just so I can get a feel for this thing, and the reason they're temporary is of course because they need to bend in more axis, so they need to twist and bend at the end, so ideally I need ball sockets and things, or I could use Ninja Flex again like I did in BB-8's head. So, um, but at the moment of course this thing can rotate freely, so we get quite an interesting effect on it there. 
So I'll have to coordinate these servos as well if I want to keep the head level. But of course, looking up, I can move both of these servos right up. And that gives me quite a good angle there to face the head up. And obviously putting them right down means I can do looking down on people, which is largely what's going to happen. And I could, of course, offset the length so it looks down more than up and so on, since the thing's going to be quite high in the air. But for now, that gives me a good feeling about what's, what um, I can do here when I get these levers made correctly. And I'm probably going to do that when I've got more of the head mass on so I can tell how bendy they can be. But essentially, with this locked to the red part, which can't be back driven, this part actually becomes very rigidly held in place by the levers. So the mechanism will work. Since the shoulders are now so wide, I think I need to do some more cosmetics. And I think if I do a little bit of cosmetic printing in every episode, then I won't have to do loads at the end. So last time I put these chest plates on, and I think what I'm gonna do is widen the hips out so we can sort of see the proportions of the whole thing this way. These are the hip parts on each side here, and there aren't too many other details, so they're just going to be left as they are, really, with a sort of smoothish finish on them. I just need to be able to mount them, and I've decided, in fact, this whole front section um, is mounted on a block with screws at the back here. So, um, in fact, for now, I'm just going to mount the hips onto that piece. So I'm just going to make little sections that uh, fill that tiny gap in between them, and I'm just going to solve and weld them on so that whole hip and uh, front section there is all in one piece. So I need to cut them up to fit on the print bed and uh, they're just too big basically to print in one piece. So I've cut each one up into three pieces and I've put these extensions on which are the parts that solvent weld onto that front piece. So I'm hoping all of these parts are gonna print okay in one go. Here are the parts, so they've printed really well actually. This one um, was printed this way up, so it's got quite a big overhang there and the, um, there's a little bit of mess where it's started to go horizontal, but on the whole that's done it quite well. There's the odd split in them, actually that one's pretty good. Let's see, this rather wider one's got some tiny splits in, all these parts are ABS of course. So they've come out pretty well, I've already stuck one side completely together. It's a slight seam line, but on the whole no worse than any of it. So I'll get the other ones stuck together and we'll get those stuck on. Here they are, they are fixed onto the front piece here. So this whole thing is now one section of cosmetics. And as I say, that removes with screws at the back so that can come off in one piece. So uh, let's look at a long shot and hopefully we can see that it's nice and wide. It's big, isn't it? Now I've got those uh, hips on, we can see actually it's not too bad proportionally. Of course, we've still got those scoops to come down and the conduits that run up from the inside of the hips up over those actuators up into the body. So um, yeah, pretty happy with the scale of this thing. If you can imagine that arm on and that scoop inside, as I say, we've got just enough clearance. The thing's starting to look a bit like Ultron, obviously with a head up here. You can see this thing's gonna be quite menacing, so I'm pretty happy with how that's going. That's the end of this video. It's a little bit shorter than usual, but that's mainly because I didn't have to explain the series elastic actuators again here because they were the same as the previous mechanism, but I still had to make them and assemble them. Next time, I'm gonna put some feedback on the joint and we're actually gonna try and make it move. I might put a dummy mass on the head and uh, replace these sticks with ones with flexible bits in and we can try and maybe make these servos track one of the inertial measurement units that makes up the motion capture suit, but otherwise I'll be there with a the pot turning them and trying to make these joints move trying to deal with data smoothing and PID control. So don't forget to check out my channel for more updates on this project and other projects, and also check out the social media links in the description to this video for sneak peeks and updates.